Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I have a sublimation project to share. If you're new to sublimation, here are some of the basic supplies that I use. And if you have never heard of sublimation, what it is, is a process, it's really just a chemistry term, the word sublimation, that describes a substance going from a solid state to a gaseous state. And in the world of creating your own custom design on products like mugs and coasters, sublimation is a way to transfer a unique custom design of your own making and have that transfer onto that product or substrate and result in a permanent change to the product itself. So this means that your sublimation projects are going to be long lasting and durable because the design has actually become a part of that product. It does require blanks that are high in polyester or have a polyester coating to, in order to kind of receive that sublimation ink. Now, specific to my project today, what I will be using in addition to those basic supplies is an airbrush die cutting machine, an alphabet die set, a stamp pad ink refill in the colors of pink, green, and blue, and the Artist Brie Charm blank. Now, technically, I've actually already made the airbrushed design that you see here. I have a previous video where I made a couple of coasters from this design, and as I mentioned, I saved that so that I can make some more coasters, but it's great to just snip off a little bit as I'm doing here and use it for additional other projects like these really fun charms. These charms are actually metal, but they have been coated on one side. So this is a single sided design and the side that you can sublimate onto is the side that's white. On the back, you'll see the metal itself. So I have this face down right now. And what I'm going to do is just snip off what I need. I don't want too much of a background because there's sublimation where you see color, that's all sublimation ink that has been airbrushed onto this copy paper. So what I wanna do is just trim off the excess so that I don't get a lot of ink transferring to um, places that I don't want it to go. But in any case, I'm working on the Artist Spree Protective Project Mat, which is this very firm, thick silicone mat that is heat resistant. So it's great for protecting your work surface, but I do also wanna protect my protective mat and I'll show you um, how I do that later because I don't want ink transferring onto this mat either. Um, over time, it might transfer onto other projects, which I don't want. Now, what I've done is traced around my charm blank so that I can position my alphabet die right onto my copy paper here and have a good idea for how to place this because the charm itself does have a hole that's punched through the metal. That will be where you actually affix a, um, a little clasp so that you can put this onto a bit of jewelry, like a bracelet or a necklace if you want. So I wanna make sure that my monogram letter is actually uh, facing the right way. Now the key here is that you wanna die cut from the back of your design. So from the side that does not have the sublimation ink. And the reason for that is because when we place this design onto our blank, it's going to go face down. So anything that needs to be legible or readable, it needs to be mirrored. And that's why I'm cutting from the back side so that when you look at this from the front side, um, it's going to look like it's mirrored, as you can see there, but um, this goes face down onto our blank, which will then result in a design that is legible when it's complete. Now the R is a little bit um, special case because it does have that little portion that is completely cut out. And that's okay, I'm gonna add that back in, 
Uh, if you wanted, you could just leave it the way it is. But the reason I've chosen to die cut out of my design is so that I can leave the color of the blank, the native color of the blank, which is in this case, white. That's going to be where I've cut out the letter. And surrounding the letter is going to be my airbrushed design. And this is just a, another way of applying a, um, a monogram to any of your projects. You can just die cut your, the name or the letter or initials out of your design. And that will leave your blank, uh, to show through. So what I'm going to do is tape my uh, blank to my design to the paper and I'm going to tape it from the back. So here you can see the metal. It's taped to the back. Now normally you would not want to actually put heat resistant tape onto the um, your design on the back of your design. Uh, from the front of your blank. And the reason is because you want the heat to make really good contact with your design and adding, you know, different layers of materials and uh, things like the heat proof tape could actually impact the, um, how well it transfers. But the reason why I've made the exception in this case is that I want to tape down the inside of the R so that we still have that. And as well, I'm using my ball stylus to really burnish that tape securely in the um, negative space where we've die cut uh, out from the paper. That way I don't have any air gaps between the paper design and the blank itself. Because if you have an air gap and you haven't pushed down um, well enough, some of that gas when the heat gets applied might escape and you might get some ghosting and some blurry lines. And I want the letter to be very sharp and legible. Now I've just wrapped or sandwiched my blank and the copy paper design that it's taped to in between some protective paper. And that protective paper is going to protect my work surface and as well protect my heat tool from having any of the ink uh, transfer accidentally onto it. So just make sure that your protective paper covers your design completely from the bottom and the top. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a peek. I'm going to, I'm using some tools here because this blank is so small. I've got some tweezers and a pokey tool to hold down the tape. And I'm just going to peel up a corner to see if my design has transferred well enough. And seeing that it has, I'm just going to let this cool so that I can handle it and then peel it up completely as you can see here. Now, if your transfer didn't, uh, if your design didn't transfer completely, what you can do is before peeling everything off, you can just let it um, get another application of heat. And what's important is that you um, heat up your uh, tool to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and give it about a minute to transfer. I sped up my video a little bit to cut out a lot of that wait time, but um, if it didn't transfer, then you'll want to just give it some extra time or um, turn up the heat a little bit. So here's a final look at my two charms. I ended up making two, uh, one for my mother-in-law and one for my sister-in-law. And you can see how it looks on the original um, paper where I sprayed and how it looks on the blank itself. So really, really fun, quick, easy project and a really great way to make some custom jewelry for your loved ones. Thanks for joining me today and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.